acres of land. No, no, excuse, excuse me, man. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, yes, I'm recusing. Commissioner myself. Miller will recuse himself on this case. For the record. Okay. Um, currently, zone is split between R15 and RP. That's mostly R15. The proposal is to rezone all of this to RM, all becoming residential. Uh, we talked about this in more detail at the work session. Um, but the history of why the zoning pattern is the way it is. This is part of the Grayland property that was over 2,000 acres once upon a time. Annexed into the city in 1989, rezoned. Um, the zoning pattern that you see in most of those properties came about at that time based on the master plan for development that Grayland had at that time. That was 34 years ago. Uh, properties have been subdivided a few times since. Um, there was a big auction about 15 or 18 years ago that you know, parceled out many of it. Um, one thing that's a little different here is what you see as the subject property is currently not yet its own parcel. It is a proposed parcel. So right now there's one parcel of land, or one large parcel of land that's in this corner area between the high school and the intersection of Banner Perimeter and East Park except for the corner piece that actually is a little parcel land on the corner. It's not developed yet. So most of this is open acreage, but it has a very unusual split zoning pattern. When you get to character area, the geography makes a little more sense. Community activity center in the squared out quadrants around that interchange, which makes it sense. The rest of Grayland to the south, neighborhood activity center, which means when you go back to the zoning, the R15 zoning that's in the CAC character area is non compliant, but it is simply not intensive enough. It needs to be high density residential or higher based on character area. So, which means rezoning it to RM fits very well in the character area. There's a slight down zoning with the RP, but an up zoning with R15 to at least something that's compliant. Um, pattern wise, of course, when you look at the aerial, um, there's vacant land here. You see the new Valdosta High School to the south and the southwest. Other vacant lands at the intersection. Very likely to become a commercial zone. Um, the applicant originally thought of R6 zoning because their proposal is for an R6 type of subdivision. Um, I had recommended seeking a little higher than that. R6 is sort of at the bottom of the spectrum as to what one might expect. Um, so what they're still proposing is an R6 type subdivision, but in RM zoning. What RM zoning does is leave open the door for possibility that if this subdivision does not materialize, then future development on this property could be houses, duplexes, or apartments. And what they're proposing is just houses. So it still works. It just seems to fit a little better with the intensities. I fully expect the other properties around here to be RP or commercial. I don't see the high school going away anytime soon, so it'll stay as is for probably many decades. What it does is physically lock in this corner area by the interchange as being an isolated corner. Um, so there is no transitional land use pattern or anything to concern. It really is going to be closest on that interchange. Um, so with that, this review of the boundaries, here's the, um, the boundary survey itself, subject property, um, South Georgia jungle type thing with the woods, adjacent properties. This is looking back toward the center town of Westford down Park Avenue. Uh, that clearing area you see down on the left, that's the back entrance to the high school. <coughs> looking the other way, in the distance there, you see the intersection with the traffic light of Park Avenue and the perimeter. Um, all the lanes across the street, with the exception of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, look just like this. And the church itself is kind of back in the trees a little bit. The proposed subdivision layout looks like this, very kind of unimaginable R6 type of style, though we're not here to propose or approve the subdivision plan, simply the zoning change. Um, the applicant in their proposal is showing some deviations from the standard development in R6 or even RM. <coughs> a reduced right of way width and also a reduced building setback. Those are things that would have to be approved through variance processes, which is outside and separate from the rezoning process. So, in staff's view, really the zoning pattern, the character area, development pattern of the area, RM, 
at least is a no-brainer. So with that, we're finding the rezoning request consists with the complex plan, stands for exercise of zoning power, and we're recommending approval of the RNSF. So if I answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Matt. Commissioner, any questions? I have one quick one, sir. So, Matt, I, 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 apparently since you said we're not worried about the flat, just worried about the rezoning, uh, you have no heartburn if this flat goes like this in one in, one out. One, you know, a one driveway? One entrance. drive. I'm just curious. That is going to be an issue with the city engineer. He and I have talked about it. We no have, comment, right? We have mixed opinions. Um, the code really calls for two. 27 lots. With this many lots. Uh, 73 lots. I know. Um, however, two driveways that close to the interchange, which might become grade separated someday, raises the eyebrow, but we're many years away from that. So that enters the, the picture. There may be some alternatives, but it is within the city engineer's purview to grant a variance for that. Uh, this, 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 this no one thinks this year, uh, how many subdivisions over the last 10 years have we said no to and didn't waver at all, and now we're thinking about wavering again? Yeah, and what has happened, even what as of recent, some of these decisions have come back to haunt us, uh, even recently, and that is also weighing on the city engineer's mind as well. Not to repeat bad decisions of the past. Yeah, uh, so you say a bad decision is to deny subdivision because only one access? Not to deny, well, to deny the design, but or to require a second point of access for this many dwelling units. Which would be a consideration if we were talking about um, Conditional use. Right. 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 And I said that to start with. Yeah. I know we're not doing this. I'm just curious yes. why Matt didn't have just a heartburn over it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I right. have concerns, but I recognize this as a no greater zoning decision, so I'm okay with it. This development design has got to go through its own review process anyway, and it will be fleshed out. I have more concerns about reduced setbacks yes. for 73 lots and there is absolutely no hardship in that. And I understand the applicant is trying to put a little larger house um, on the lot and there's not enough depth in this design for it to work. So which one do you give leeway to, the rear or the front yard? Um, uh -huh. Probably a little bit of both. But here's another thought, not, and it entered my mind, but I'm not in the real estate contract. The boundary line around the subdivision has not been established yet, recorded. Right. If the developer needs a few more feet for each of these lots in terms of depth, add more land. Because everything around it is vacant. <clears throat> so that's the solution, granted, with the change in the real estate contract, etc. But that boundary line isn't there right now. It could possibly be redrawn to make this a little higher acreage, to add a little more depth to each lot, if indeed those lots are to hold a house that big. Minimum required square footage in RN for a house is 800 square feet. Right. These are a lot larger than that, which is a choice. And that's where the no hardship argument boils down. Any other questions for staff? So we will enter the public hearing portion of this case. Thank you. Um, anyone here tonight who wishes to speak in favor of this case, please come forward. Matt, are you coming back up for this again? Yes, sir. There's not a whole lot of people left here. <laughs> he's worked hard on this design, trying to get different things, and he's put some features in it, which are good. But it's limited. Still Mr. Emmett, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Good evening, Planning Commission. Me again. Um, as Matt mentioned, there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of things in this one, but, but we don't want to have Matt. You pull the side up. Okay. Okay. So Matt, was, was, was this your design to have one in and out, or was that your, what you instructed to do? No, so I, I, we actually had two. Yeah. If you look at the, the road there. There's two. Ro there's a road there. Yeah. That, that road was originally came out. Yeah. And talking with Ben O'Dowd and talking with Matt, <clears throat> the concern is that if we do an overpass. That's just something we can't take away at a future date. You know, that, that road, if it were there, 
and overpass getting close enough to the to that intersection to the the, the inner perimeter intersection if we go up an overpass that's kind of the grade they think they need to be in so that that's the concern and also knows we kept about 20 feet of right of way on that first lot in order to plan on widening the road the park avenue getting wider at some point to need that road that width for that so we're we're totally good with two, two inches we don't mind um, the compromise was a, was a boulevard entrance it's not perfect but you know the, the intent is that you know that if, it, if an emergency happened there's a very short section there that you don't have two ways of access you have to, you have to literally wreck at that first lot or second lot to not have two points of ingress and egress for the subdivision and emergency vehicle go the way we're totally fine with, with some kind of unimproved at the other entrance some way to provide emergency access whatever whatever comes up that our schedule will be in of course you know it's not a design meeting it's not a free zone um, but we originally had two, two driveways um, either way is fine with us whatever whatever engineering comes up with I, I, it's not really my design argument there. We're good with two ways. Um, we're like you, 125. We're used to you know, yeah. doing two ways. So, um, so, so just a question. Did I hear you use the terminology overpass? That is what has been mentioned. That makes no sense. That's not my plan. For, for long term, and I mean decades long term, in the perimeter, have some more great separation in it. This is one where the likely scenario is for Park Avenue to go over in a front road. This is in the 50 year planning process. I like to make it up. I love to design it. I love to do the first person part of that. It is likely a great separation that the Hill Avenue intersection might have had the first and probably also the East Road. But that, that is the reason why I was taking out originally had two driveways. Um, there's a couple couple small things. There's a, a middle, middle walking path in the lots. Um, just provide, we're trying to make it more pedestrian friendly there. Um, we have a, a play park up front. It'd be a great place for some mailboxes. Um, and, and a play park up front. Um, you know, 73 lots. We've got a, a small corner that has a potential well in the corner. You know, the, the, the plan will likely change multiple times again um, before it gets through final design. With or without one or two drives, we don't know but this time. This is kind of the most we can show in there. Um, as far as lots have roughly an acre for stormwater retention. Um, sewer is available. It's the, the, the western portion of Park Avenue, um, when we ran the sewer to the school, there's a, a sewer manhole within 100 foot of that corner. Uh, water, water exists along Park Avenue. So utilities right there. So, you know, from a development standpoint, it supports this higher density type of zoning, and uh, everything right there would be developed whenever, whenever it's needed. Matt, do you know if this is going to be for sale or rentals? I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm just saying, 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 I'm Anyone here this evening that would like to speak in opposition to this case? Seeing no one come forward, we will close the public hearing portion of this case. We go back to the commissioners for discussion and hopefully an eventual motion. No discussion.